Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. Uh, today and next time, I would like to wrap up a little bit the story about surfaces. And I would like to show you two, um, today only one of course, kind of cool things you can do with surfaces. Um, but I won't go too much into details, just show you what you can do. And it's pretty amazing. So stay with me. Um, today I would like to not surfaces. So what are knotted surfaces? I have pretty cool pictures and some animations. So two of really cool, beautiful videos linked in the description. We will run one of them live. Um, okay, but the slogan for today is this core dimension two. So core dimension, what is a core dimension? Well, there will be an ambient space. I will have some object and I will embed it into an ambient space. Let me call my object X and will sit in my ambient space. Let's say X is of dimension uh, M. Then the core dimension is just the dimension of the ambient space N minus the dimension of the space uh, that I'm looking at, so M minus N. We'll come back to this uh, later. And it turns out for knotting, core dimension two is the most exciting one. So let's actually have a look. Let's start with knots. We have seen quite a few knots so far. So hopefully um, those pictures, at least particularly this one here, kind of make sense. So let's study knots. Knot is a one dimensional object. Um, let's study knots in uh, one, 2D, 3D, and 4D. So a knot in 2D, note that a knot is the no is intersection. So a knot is not intersecting itself. So in three space, that is good and it's still knotted, but in two space without any intersection, there's not much you can do. And the knot is just this line here, K, and every knot divides R2, the background here, into an interior, and an exterior. That's not quite a trivial theorem, but let's go for it. Um, and that, that's just no knotting. Yeah. If you need to do it without self intersections, there's not much you can do. Okay. So three space is the one we like. We know not theory in three space is exciting. Uh, at least I think it's exciting. <laughs> but anyway, in four space, not theory is extremely boring. Why is not theory extremely boring? Because you always have this move here. And if you have this move, so you can't distinguish which crossing goes over the under one, uh, it's trivial. So why do we have this move? Well, think of the fourth dimension as being a color. So now your knot can have colors and you can vary the color kind of con uh, continuously along the knot. And let's say my color here on my top strand is green. My color of my uh, bottom strand is actually red. But um, now in four space, the colors green and red are very far apart. So you can do this operation. They just, they just are very far apart. They don't see one another. I have a much better, um, well, not my, uh, someone made a much better um, animation later that we will see where we come back to colors. And then this picture hopefully makes more sense. But all I'm saying here is in 4D, there are no knots but not because like in 2D, there's not enough space, but because there's too much space. So you can always undo everything, right? So in two dimensional, it's boring. There are only trivial knots. In four dimensional, it's boring. There are only trivial knots. And the three dimensional is great. And three is exactly this core dimension uh, two thing. So ambient space here is R3. The knot is of dimension one, three minus one. It's exactly the core dimension two. What's that? Maybe we should like to we would like to explore that further. Maybe we should. So okay, we had surfaces, and well, uh, certainly you can't knot any surfaces in in two D, but you can knot surfaces in three D actually. So this is a knotted surface in three D, uh, for sure, right? Like with a torus type object. Um, but this Klein bottle, and again, you can't even embed it in R three, so you can't also knot it in R three. So uh, it gets a bit messy. So um, there is some version of knot theory of surfaces in 3D, but that's not very exciting. It's not the core dimension two one, which is way more fun. So we will move up one dimension. So all I'm saying here is that, okay, we can do something in R3. So it's a bit more exciting than the R2 uh, for the 2D for the just a string, but still it doesn't quite work in all generality. And it's also not much different. Just look at it from knot theory itself. So maybe we should just go one dimension up and hope for the core dimension two uh, fun or the core dimension two miracle. 
And indeed, in four space, and now it gets a bit tricky to imagine because it's four dimensional, and at least my brain is not super great in imagining four dimensions. But anyway, so I'll give it a shot. In four dimensions, you can actually not like everything, and there's a really exciting knot theory. So let me try to explain here a nodding of a torus. Well, it's a very boring nodding. It's a non-nodding, but anyway, let me just explain the picture in uh of the torus here. So you should think of it as a movie. So then the fourth dimension is time, right? Like, and every slice here is actually a three dimensional, well, in this case, a two dimensional slice. Okay, so the whole movie should give you a three dimensional picture. And if reading along the movie, well, seeing those cuts here, you can really just uh, see the torus itself, right? So you can actually see the torus by just reading along this movie here. So here's a little circle is down here. This circle gets a bit bigger, then you have two circles, uh, and then you have another circle here and another circle here. So here green, uh, those two are the same. And then maybe the red one, here those two, and the blue one here. Okay. So this three-dimensional object is actually a movie of two-dimensional objects. And we can exploit that for the fourth dimension. So now I have a movie of, um, well, it's hard to imagine this is a three-dimensional picture, but here is a movie of uh, a knotted object in four dimensions, because now, actually, every movie frame is a three-dimensional picture, like this is a knot picture. And this is a movie, and it works exactly in the same way. So a knotted surface, in this is a surface, a knotted surface in 4D can be presented by a movie of knot pictures. So knot theory in 4D are movies of not theory. That's kind of a fun idea. And you can actually push this quite far, although it takes a while to really digest. So let me show you more pictures, hopefully to convince you that it actually works. So um, what you can do is you, you can, for example, write down uh, a Reidemeister theorem for those knotted surfaces. And this really works for all surfaces. So here's a movie again. Now the movie reads a little bit differently. The movie reads whatever, in, in this direction. But anyway, um, a randomizer move would be picture equals picture, and a randomizer move now is movie equals movie. So let's just have a look at the movie. So if you follow the movie, well, on the right-hand side, it gets this little, little piece here, which is exactly this one here, right? It's very boring here. It's very boring here. It's very boring here. It's very boring here. But you see this little bump. And clearly, if you just think about it, it, it's the same as this one. And here's another movie, which just is, well, this picture here with the various uh, lines of height. A little bit more complicated, for example, as those pictures, um, because you can't really draw them anymore in three space, because they will intersect in three space, they won't intersect in four space. So here's an operation that you can do. And you can see, for example, here in the horizontal cut, you can see here the bottom picture. And here you can see the bottom picture as well. And all you're doing here is kind of a stretching out of this little bump here into uh, a line operation. And there's a list of those. It's a long list, I must admit, but it's a finite list. And you have this exciting version of knot theory in three space, which is a movie theory of knots. <laughs> it's kind of uh, really great. So not much really is known on this field. Maybe it gets because it gets a bit hard to imagine. So I would think of this as a very open playground for many, many new exciting uh, ideas. Just let me mention here, uh, if you are interested in noting three-dimensional objects, you need to look into five space. And I don't think many people do that because it gets even harder to imagine. But of course, you can now think of a, a movie in a movie or a two-dimensional movie, like my movie works now in two directions and every movie frame is of dimension three. So I have a five-dimensional object. Gets a bit messy. That's probably why people don't do it. But keep in mind, it's a core dimension two that makes nothing interesting. Okay, if the was, movie was too hard for you, I will now show you a movie of a different approach, namely the color approach. You can think of the fourth dimension as being color, and um, then you can, for example, this piece here will be a knotted sphere. Um, so this doesn't self-intersect. The movie, the, the movie will make it clear. By the way, I said again, this is really great uh, site. It is linked in the description. It has many more of those funny movies. Anyway, so this doesn't intersect. Why doesn't it intersect? Because our color code here is the green is the middle, 
red is at the very top uh, and blue is at the, at the very bottom. So blue and uh, green and red and green are very far away. So at these intersection points, red and green intersect, but they are very far away. So actually they don't intersect. Here's blue and green and so on. But because this changes continuously, so on the way through from blue to, uh, sorry, this is very nice blue, from red to blue, you actually will need some green in the middle. We'll see that. And that's why you can't pull off the green because there's some green in the middle. Okay, let me stop waffling and let me just show you the movie. So here it is, as I said, link is in the description. So all I'm seeing here, all we are seeing here is a very, very long S2. So a very, very long ball, but it's really, really just a ball. Um, so it's just, just stretched out as you can see, but it's really just a ball. So the so a, a hollow ball, and that's that's what we want to not. So in three space, we not a string. So in four space, we not a ball. And now let's not the ball. So, okay, so it is green, 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 and then it gets reddish, right? It changes continuously. And the blue and the green doesn't do not intersect. They don't know each other. So this is not an intersection, but you might be already able to see it here, actually, that there's green inside. So you can't pull it free. I will see that nicer in a second. And then you can do the same here. Green is inside, so you can't pull it free, but there's still no self-intersection. And what you get is an amazing movie of a knotted sphere. And the movie gets even a little bit better. Um, so I will stop it around in the middle, but I, the movie now will slice the picture in the middle so we can actually see it a little bit better. Um, okay, so those things don't intersect, right? So you can think of it as being non-intersecting because the colors are very far away. We have the evaluation map in the left. And now let's have a look in the middle. Um, so if you slice it in the middle, you see that it's actually stuck because there's green in green, as you can see uh, here and here. Okay, I stopped the movie there. There are many more of those great movies. Uh, link in the description. Very, very, very nice. Uh, highly recommended. I uh, really love it. Anyway, so this was a video just about what you can do with surfaces. And this field of knotting surfaces in Core Dimension 2, which is four space, is either colorful or movieful. Depends a little bit. I would like to think about it, but it's certainly widely open. And well, maybe at one point we will jump into this and discover some new exciting mathematics. Anyway, for now, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.